Nice. Got some big fish. Are you kidding me? <laughs> oh my god! This big mama came out. This is the biggest fish I've ever killed bull fishing. Sun's out. Buff salt, Sun's baby. Out buff salt. Yes, <laughs> Good job. What a night. Right there in the rock. Wait, there's a big one. Nice shot, Kaler. Get him, Smitty. Doubled up, baby. Hey! <laughs> Nice shot, man. There we go. We got two of them now. He's a good gator. He's a monster. That's a good gator. <laughs> oh, he came from a long way. Wait, that was awesome. Dude, that wow. <laughs> How cool is that? Wow. Love bull fishing. Come here. Time for a free boat ride in the AMS boat. Hey, hey, hey. Hey everybody and welcome back to the Bow Fishing Buzz presented by AMS Bow Fishing and Mega Mouth Bow Fishing as well. My name is Matthew. Of course, I'm here with my good buddy D Schmidt. How's everybody doing today? Hopefully everyone's having a good day. That's nice right. October day. Beautiful October day. We got some nasty weather rolling in for this weekend we though. Oh, yep. yep. Yeah. Which is cool because yeah, you know, I shot my archery buck, and uh, I think somebody else here might have done something as well. Yeah, I don't remember the last time that, as of October seventh, <laughs> you and I were both tagged out. You shot a beauty, Schmitty. Um, and you know, hats off to you and your dad. Uh, you've got a beautiful chunk of property, and you maintain it. Uh, food plots. Um, you you're passing on younger deer. You've got sheds from past years, mm -hmm. especially on this deer here that you shot too. You've got sheds from that deer also. So shot a dandy Schmidt. You want to tell us a little bit about that? Sure. sure. Before we jump into the little bit of a bowfishing thing, because we do got a great show. Oh, we do. Absolutely. Absolutely. Episode 47 yep. right here, the bowfishing buzz. Um, we're going to be going over some of the latest BAA record fish. Mm -hmm. And then we've got a special guest coming on. A lot of you don't really know, probably know um, Pete Gregoire from Missouri. Um, but Pete uh, does a lot for the bowfishing community. Um, he did a lot here in Wisconsin. He moved to Missouri. Um, he does a lot with the BAA, and he actually handles all of your your uh, BAA records. He gets them up on the Facebook pages, gets them certified, gets your certificates. Um, so Pete does a lot, and he's probably going to be doing a little bit more. So we're going to be giving Pete a call. He's also guides also for bowfishing. Mm -hmm. So great show. We're going to give them a little call, but um, before we jump into the bow fishing here, Schmitty, let everybody know about, their, uh, about your, your hunt on your deer. Sure. Yeah. Like, uh, like Matt said, I'm very lucky to, uh, my family has a nice chunk of land that we like to manage. Beautiful. And, um, it's really, since I was, you know, a young kid, it's like been my obsession is whitetail hunting. I love it. Yeah. Like uh, food plots, the whole deal, the whole nine yards. I just, I love every aspect of it. Mm -hmm. But starting, I'm trying to think now, this is the third year of history with this deer, as a three-year-old, he had a big, he had like a, what looked to me like a tumor on the left side of his body. Like in the dead center, right in the middle of his body was a big growth. Sure. And he was a three-year-old eight-point deer at that time. I filmed him. I, you know, passed him that year. You know, decent looking deer, but, you know, mm -hmm. it just wasn't quite the caliber of deer that I was looking for. Yep. And we just, we called him Tumor because it looked like he had a, a tumor growing on the left side of his body. It's not a tumor. No. And... Is Actually, that a movie or something like that? I have, I have no I think it was idea. Arnold Schwarzenegger, he said that. It's not a tumor. Get to the chopper. <laughs> Get to the chopper. It's not a tumor. <laughs> um, but, yeah, we saw him. I saw him all the time as a three-year-old. I would hunt on the east side of the property. I'd see him. West side, I'd see him. Just your typical three-year-old deer that is just wandering out and about like crazy. Sure. He managed to dodge bullets all through rifle season. <laughs> um, That's always a good thing. Yeah. Yep, I found his sheds as a three-year-old. As a four-year-old, he was around again last year, but again, mm -hmm. he was kind of on that brink of being a shooter type of deal. If I'd have seen him, you know, I maybe would have would have shot him. He was a good-looking deer, again, an eight-point deer. Yep. Um, and so in, into last year, we had pictures of him late season. We're like, man, if that deer could make it through another year, he'd be a he'd be a. And he was starting to, you know, just kind of genetically, he was not blessed with a bunch of points or anything. But he's thick and he's wide, eight-point deer. Yeah. And we, I know Dad and I both said if he makes it to next year, he's going to be number one on the hit list. Just with the the history we have of him, all the footage we have, the pictures sure. is just ridiculous. Um, so and he was kind of a, a homebody. He was. He was a kind of a homebody. I was. I was 
his three-year-old year, I think he wandered a lot. I'm guessing he was on neighboring property. He was on all of our cameras over all of okay. our property. So he was moving yeah. a lot there. But I think as a four-year-old, he kind of, that home range maybe shrunk a little bit mm -hmm. that, that I know of at the least. core area. Yeah. His core was maybe like, I would say like a 80 to 100 acres. Wow. Honestly. Really? Um, wow. So again, last year he dodged he dodged all the the bullets during rifle season, and sure thing this this summer we put cameras out, putting food plots in and everything. Here he shows up as a velvet deer, the first shooter deer that we get mm -hmm. pictures of, and I'm like, heck yeah, wow, two that's cool. back. Um, so I'm trying to think. Opening opening day, I hunted, didn't see him. Had a great sit though in the, in the area that he was showing up. Um, I hunted on and off there. He would show up on camera a little bit, and here probably well, I'm trying to think now was I shot him on the sixth, so. On the fourth, I was up north catching walleyes. Yep, nice. Tactic cam goes off. Ring. <laughs> oh, here he is on the camera at like six o'clock. Oh, yeah, broad daylight. I'm like, oh my gosh, that's so, like a good hour before it gets dark. Yeah, I mean, he was, and it was seventy some degrees that day. I'm like, yep. what in the world? A five year old deer on October fourth doing running around in this temperature? That's crazy. I gotta capitalize he on. He was this. hungry. He was. He's he, hungry. He, and the the spot that we got down there, as far as the food goes. The plot came in fantastic. He's got everything he needs in a, like a 30-acre patch, nice. honestly. Mm -hmm. um, so we went back another hot day on the 5th, and I'm um, like, well, this deer is not going to daylight again in 70-degree heat, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Sh here, 15 minutes before shooting light, he comes out at like 120 yards. Oh. And I'm like, oh, man, oh, man. And he... He worked his way into like seventy, but then it was it it you know legal hours, legal shooting light was done with, and he never worked his way closer than probably seventy yards that night. So I'm like, oh my gosh, you know, you only get so many chances at a five year old deer, yeah, especially this early in the year. He's gonna right. break off this pattern and be nocturnal till he starts chasing does around or or something. You're you know, thinking, you, yeah, you always go worst case scenario. Mm -hmm. Um, so the next day I went in, same deal, seventy something degrees, just terrible, and um, hours were like six fifty. I want to say hours were. So I'm sitting there, there's deer in the plot. And the thing is, there's a, there's a, it's a, it's a big food plot. So it's not like a deer pops out and they're in range. You got to, you got to kind of luck into them being close to Coming you. down to yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm mm -hmm. sitting there and sitting there in the stand and I'm like, God, darn it. There's 10 minutes left to light. If he keeps doing what he's doing, he's going to come out a hundred some yards away yep. and slowly work his way. And we're going to have another situation mm -hmm. where I'm going to have to sneak out of there with a shooter buck where I, you know, within a hundred yards, which yeah. is just a disaster. Um, so I'm sitting there, I'm sweating, you know, and night goes on. Good amount of deer movement and everything. So we get down to like the last 10 minutes of light, and I hear something. I, all the deer in a plot kept looking straight at me in the stand, but like below me. And I'm thinking, oh, no. So naturally, those deer are upwind of me. Yep. Behind me is downwind. Yep. So I'm worried. I'm like, oh, is a deer back there stomping? What's going on? And there's a yearling buck kind of close to me, probably 30 yards away. And all of a sudden, he did not raise his tail. He didn't get weird. He just started to walk d straight away from me. I'm like, hmm, okay. So I'm oh, sitting there. Somebody's scaring him. Yeah, I'm like, bit. what is going on there? Is there something behind me that, you know, is there a coyote? What's going on? And all of a sudden I hear crunch, 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 crunch. And I'm thinking, my first thought is, ah, this deer's directly downwind. He's going to walk across the trail I walked in on. He's going to catch my ground scent. This is, you know, I, this is this is bad. Yeah. Whatever's about to happen. All these yeah. deer are going to spook, whatever. And the deer keeps coming, and I look down. And I'm not in a, a stand, maybe maybe six, a little, like in closed blind, six feet off the ground maybe. And I look down into the corner of the blind. I can just barely, I, I, I hear the noise and I look, I, the deer's so close I can't even see him out of oh, my wow. window. I look down and here I see the right side of that deer's rack. And I'm like, oh my gosh, are you, it's him. Wow. It's Tumor. It's Tumor. And he waltz out in front of the blind at 10 yards. I saw him for maybe 10 seconds. Oh the whole deal gosh. lasted maybe 10 seconds. He ran 75 yards and tipped wow. over. So uh, it was just kind of one of those hunts that it kind of shouldn't have happened that easy when you think of a five-year-old deer, but it, it worked out really well. And I think a lot of that early season hunts are like that. Those deer, you know. They're not as sensitive to warm oh, weather right. yet. Right. You know, and, and another not, week, he might wait for a cold front to do that again. Right. You know? And the hunting pressure just hasn't been there right. yet. Or, you know, right. they haven't gone through that first season of archery mm -hmm. into deer season and stuff like that, you know, rifle season. Yeah. So. Yeah. I, I couldn't, I couldn't believe it when he, when he came out, I'm like, Oh, are you kidding me? So it, it literally, it was maybe 10 or 15 seconds. The whole Lord, he come out and he walked right in front of me, mm -hmm. shot him. 
Wow. And uh, he ran off, and the deer was, the body on the deer, you know, he wasn't rutted down or anything. He was almost 200 pounds dressed. Yeah. That's, what do you say he weighed? To- like 194, wow. I think it was, and the scale was wow. bouncing a little bit, but at least 194. That's a toad. Just a big old deer, and uh, I couldn't be happier, but I'm not going to lie to you, this cold weather now and me not hunting, I, there's a little bit of, I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm you'll, not used to this. You'll be out there filming yeah. and scouting. scouting. Yeah. yeah. Um, just so everybody kind of knows here, Derek is kind of quiet about his deer, <laughs> what he's seeing, and we can always tell here at work because all of a sudden there'll be like, all of a sudden Derek will leave like early one day and we're like, yeah, yeah, something's up. Something's I got up. a dentist appointment. <laughs> yeah. And, uh. All of a sudden, another two days go by, and then on the third day or fourth day, he's like gone again, like at two o'clock. So we all, we all know when Schmitty's on something. It's just a matter of him getting getting on that deer. But we all know when you're on a deer, and we all know it's going to be a good deer. And more than likely, you're going to get that deer. Yeah, that's you know, because you got you've got some great property, you've got some great setups. Yeah. And one thing that you've got is, um, I guess, not such a itchy trigger finger. I have that. Oh, I don't know if you do, man. And you're, you're passing deer all the time. I am passing deer, but but um, you you've got a lot of you know you, you're patient. Yeah, you wait for that right deer. Yeah, and that's what it takes. Yeah, uh, I'm not saying that everybody needs to do that. No, not know, at all. That's not what it's all you know. But that's the, how you prefer to hunt. It, and, and it, that's awesome. Yeah, it, it's reached a point, and yeah, like I said, if you shoot a spike in or a or a dolphin, and you're as long as you're happy with hey, it, man, that's all that, that matters. Absolutely. Whatever Let's, gets that ticker going, yeah, absolutely. Get everybody in the woods. I'd never mm-hmm. put someone down for shooting a, a deer that's not a caliber of a deer I would shoot, but. It yeah. just, you know, you kind of reach different points in your hunting career where you'd rather right. eat, eat take soup than shoot a deer that maybe could be on the hit right. list next year or something like and, that. And Derek, also, a lot of the deer that you like to harvest or shoot are the older, mature deers. There might be a deer that has a little bit higher scoring rack. Yeah, absolutely. But you prefer to go after that five, five, yeah, five and a half f- yeah. or older deer. Right, right. Yeah. Yep, and there's, mm-hmm. there's a good, that's always... That's always that's what hits me the the worst, and it I you know every rifle season you know you I'm sure you've been there so a deer you've been watching whatever gets shot, mm-hmm. and you know you can't be upset about that that someone shot a deer you'd shoot, but what kills me is when you pass a deer that's three years old you think and he's got a potential to be just a stud, and yep. then you see that deer get shot like yep that's fantastic for who shot him that's that's good but it's those ones that haven't reached their potential yet that could possibly be a deer you hunt those are the ones that sting. <laughs> You know, if someone shoots a five-year-old, okay, cool. That deer's mature. Right. He's reached potential. You know, he's he's going to yep. put a couple inches on over the next couple of years, but then he's going to start going downhill. But it's those young bucks that, that yeah. sometimes get me. But, yeah. yeah, it's all fun. It's I love doing it. Like you right. said, the food plots, you and I both are putting – I don't even want to tally up all the hours we spend right. doing that stuff. Mm-hmm. But when you shoot a deer in a plot you put in, it is like a totally different – it makes the work. It's not even work. The next year, you go out and you you know what you have to do it. Yeah. And you know, I don't, I enjoy it honestly. Right. The the sweat that goes into it. So mm-hmm. yeah, it's been a very successful season so far here at at AMS. Yes, it has. Yes, it has. Congratulations on your deer. Well, thank you. That's I appreciate awesome. that. I appreciate That's it. awesome. So with that being said, we're going to get into uh, the uh, BA new records that have been put up there. And um, like I said, if you want to follow along on the AMS YouTube page, mm-hmm. there'll be a video along with this podcast as well. Um, so, Derek, you want to start it out right here? We're going to sure. go with uh, the, some of the BAA records now. Absolutely. So, congratulations first off here to Chris Daly. Is that that last name? Mm-hmm. There? Chris Daly, congrats on your BAA Georgia State record goldfish, three pounds. Congrats, Chris, on a big old goldie. Good job. Now we've got Krista Dressel on her BAA Nebraska State record smallmouth buff, nine pounds, 14.4 ounces, and Terry Dressel. Oh. On his BAA Nebraska State record big mouth buff, weighing 41 pounds, 3.2 ounces. That's quite the day for the Dressel family. I was right going to say, that's that's a bullfish and killing family right there. And I looked at the, the certificates, and they were both shot on the same day. Really? Yeah. Wow. So they had a heck of a day. That's a heck boat. of an outing right there. You bet. Uh, congrats to Tyler Larson on his BAA Wisconsin State record flathead catfish, 49 pounds, 10.4 ounces. Right here in our home state here. Heck Good job, yeah. Tyler. That's awesome. Benedict Kazi. That's an amazing name. I love it. And the fishy shot is pretty cool, too. On his BAA Virginia State record, Cobia, oh. weighing 36 pounds even. Them are really cool-looking fish, Cobia. Yeah. 36 pounds. Good Lord. I mean, that's a big fish. Mm-hmm. That's cool. That's awesome. Benedict. Amazing name. It is cool. Benedict. 
Congrats to Mark McMillan on his BAA World and Maryland State record Weak Fish. Weak Fish. Weak Fish. Yeah. I don't even know, Matt, what a weak fish looks like. I am I didn't know until I looked at the picture. Two pounds, nine point six ounces. Congrats to Mark. On his weak fish. Yeah. Yep. Congrats to Thomas Raleigh on his BAA Maryland State record American Eel. Ooh. Weighing two pounds, twelve point eight ounces. Cool. Congrats to Jed Walker. BAA World and Louisiana State record black drum. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, that thing is a stud. I, I don't know what I was expecting to read for weight there, but yeah. it wasn't that. Uh, congrats <laughs> to Jed Walker on his black drum. 54 pounds, 3.2 ounces. Wow. Yeah, that thing is just a beast. That's a toad. That's a cool-looking fish, too. If you've never seen a picture of it, like I said, we'll have it up there. It's an awesome-looking fish. That's cool. That's really a cool-looking cool. fish. Just before we jump in, Matt, just in case anyone listening, if we sound a little bit crisper, a little clearer, a little louder, Matthew <laughs> did some research and he's got us all set up with a brand new podcasting system. That's here. right. We got That's new right. mics. We got a new interface, motherboard up here. We mm-hmm. are moving up in the podcast ranks. New headphones. Yes. Yes. I don't <laughs> got black fuzzies all over me now anymore. Uh oh, our battery just went dead on our GoPro. So that's crazy. Hold on good one thing, second. Good thing we got a backup. I just plugged that in, all. and literally it was like at a hundred percent. Yeah, see now it's back up and running again. Hmm. Okay. Weird. Goofy. Yeah, I better put on the backup just in case. Yep. Backup time. There we go. Good all deal. right. So with that, Schmitty, let's give uh, Pete a call. Yeah. And uh, we're gonna talk to him and ask him some questions. So uh, let's give him a ringo. All right. Oh, doesn't that sound that nice? nice and clear. Yeah. Hello, it's Pete. Hey, Pete. This is Matthew and Derek from the Bow Fishing Buzz Podcast. How are you doing today? Hey, gentlemen. Good. How are you guys doing? Well, we can't complain. It's yeah, a beautiful good. fall day up here. Got some weather rolling in, but um, yeah, it's a great day here at the AMS shop. And um, we're really glad that you were able to join us today, Pete. Oh, it's my pleasure. Thanks for inviting me. You bet. You know, I don't think a lot of people really realize of what you all do for the bow fishing world. Um, you know, you're you're a lot of hands on. You like to help a lot of people. You like to be in organizations. You like to help organize things. And um, so it's going to be kind of cool to be able to talk to you, so our fans get a chance to know who you are, yeah. know what you do. Um, but first of all, peace. You know. Um, you started out, you know, I probably met you probably 12 or 13 years ago when I first started shooting the Wisconsin Bow Fishing Association tournaments. And um, you were part of the Wisconsin Bow Fishing Association when I first met you. That's right. Yeah, I, I started shooting some of my first tournaments out of a 14-foot boat that I actually built myself <laughs> out of wow. Cedar Strip. Wow. Um, and... Uh, Never really expected to, to bow fish. Uh, I grew up in the Northeast, and um, it's not really a thing in the Northeast. So you think about Massachusetts, New Hampshire, Maine. Um, the bow fishing opportunities up there are very, very limited, and they're not really talked about. Sure. Um, so I, mm-hmm. I never really had a lot of experience with bow fishing until I came to Wisconsin, and uh, then, you know, I, I met you at the, at the tournament scene and, uh, it's been, it's been a whirlwind since then. I mean, I have been, uh, <laughs> yeah, just obsessed, literally yeah. obsessed with bow fishing. That's awesome. Then. Well, we're going to kind of start this out a little backwards than normal. We're going to kind of start out where we are currently right now and then kind of work our way into the middle and then go back to where we are right now. So we're going to ask you a few questions here, Pete. So the first one here is, um, you know, tell us what your current role and position is with the Bow Fishing Association of America. So it's a, it's a flexible thing that's happening right now, Matt. <laughs> yes, um, I, yeah, that's awesome. This is a kind of a big announcement. Um, mm-hmm. I, I, I had stepped back from the Bow Fishing Association of America um, a couple of years ago. Um, there was a new president, there was a new board of directors that stepped in, and, uh, you know, as far as I'm concerned, they did a fantastic job. Prior to that, I was serving as the BAA secretary and treasurer, okay. um, and also the records manager, records keeper, mm-hmm. um, and uh, I stepped away from that for a couple of years, 
but uh, earlier this year, I stepped back into the role of taking on the record. Yeah, that was great and, to see him back uh, in there as yeah, well. It really was. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I'm glad I I'm glad I was able to get back in and do yeah. that. Um, it's very fulfilling to do that work. It's it's a lot of work. We can talk about yeah. that in a little bit. <laughs> um, but uh, you know, the big announcement is that you know the the current president, the current vice president, they're stepping down from their positions. Um, and I, I essentially put my nomination in for the president position, and I will be the next president of the Gold Fishing Association of America, uh, starting with the spring oh, meeting next year. That is awesome. We got the awesome, applause Pete. in the background for you, Pete, and that's great to hear. Thank you. Um, I know you're going to do a great job just from seeing what you have done for here in Wisconsin, you know, and, and your your guiding business and what you do. Uh, have done for the BAA. Uh, you're going to do a great job, and it's really awesome to hear that you're going to be the next president of the BAA. Congratulations, man. That's yeah, awesome. That's awesome, Pete. Good job. Mm-hmm. Thank you that's very much. Awesome. Yeah. So, Pete, I'll ask you this. Every every podcast Matt and I start, we, we read off a bunch of, of state records, world records, BAA records. So my question to you is, what are the steps needed to submit a request for a BAA state or world record fish? Yeah, thanks, Derek. We, um, you know, we do get a lot of records that yeah, come in. Uh, bow fishing is really growing in popularity across the entire country, and uh, we put the records in place uh, quite a quite a while ago. But it it, it just keeps getting more and more mo- momentum as as the the time goes by. Um, the the steps to submit a record are to go to the bowfishingassociation.com website. Um, there's a records link. And when you click on the link, you'll see a, a set of instructions. Uh, the first and foremost thing is to become a member of the BAA. Um, and then depending on the membership level that you choose, whether it's a paid membership or if it's a free membership, um, if it's a free membership, you have to pay a $5 fee, a registration fee for a new record. Okay. Um, that applies only to adults. Uh, okay. Youth, we, we accept new, new members and uh, all youth records for free. That's nice. Um, and then... It's a matter of, you know, making sure that your fish is weighed properly in order to accept that submission. Um, for a lot of state agencies like the Missouri Department of Conservation or the Wisconsin DNR, you know, they're going to require you to go find a biologist and to go to a certified scale and to jump through some hoops in order to make sure that that fish qualifies as a record. Mm-hmm. Uh, we went down a slightly different path trying to simplify this for our membership right uh we only require that you carry a scale um we do have a recommended scale um but if you have a, a fairly high quality scale and then you have a weight with a known designation on it for example uh we recommend people carry like a two and a half pound right. mm-hmm. um, barbell weight or a dumbbell weight mm-hmm. um and then basically you turn your scale on you hang the weight from the scale if it shows that you're close to that weight designation, for example, two and a half pounds or five pounds, um, then you remove the scale or the weight from the scale and you hang the fish and we'll accept that. Um, as long as the fish is clearly hanging free and clear of the ground, um, it, it really does help simplify the whole process. Uh, we require the whole thing to be videoed. Gotcha. Uh, we do ask that the video be submitted and uh, yeah. I mean, that's, uh, and then we, we require pictures. Like we, yeah. we definitely want to see a picture of you with your fish, right. uh, because we want to put that on the website and make sure that you get some recognition for your record. Absolutely. Yeah. Cool. Absolutely. And that's a cool thing, Pete, because I like what you have done by allowing us to have, you know, to kind of do it ourselves on the scale that you guys recommend or a, a high quality scale. Uh, because, you know, you guys know boat fishing, a lot of the stuff we do is from midnight to sunrise. And um, a lot of the places, of course, if you shoot a, a record fish, you got to wait a long time to get that thing to a certified area to even find one, you know. So, so that's really a, a neat thing that the the BA has done is allowed us to use our scales um, and get that stuff taken care of ourselves, which is a really really cool deal. I like that a lot. I think it's helped a lot of people out. Yeah, right. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So. Pete, why is it important um, for the guys that are out there bow fishing? Um, no matter if you're doing it for fun, shooting tournaments, you know, just out there with your buddies, um, you know, probably you know, ten to twenty times a year. Why is it important for us to belong to the BAA? 
So the Bow Fishing Association of America is the only national organization that's really going to stand up for your rights as a bow fisherman. Mm -hmm. Um, there are a lot of challenges that are being presented on a state-by-state -state basis. Um, thankfully, nothing is coming down from a federal perspective, but from a state-by-state -state perspective, there are challenges to bow fishing. Right. Uh, it may be a challenge to um, the lights that we're using. Um, Delaware recently went through some light challenges. Yeah, it might a... be a noise consideration. Yep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or it might be the fish species that you're trying to get. Maybe they're trying to put unnecessary limits on certain fish species. Um, wow. You know, and, you know, as far as the BAA is concerned, um, as far as I'm concerned, you know, restrictions, if they're warranted by science, um, are acceptable. Meaning that, you know, we don't want to see the sport die as a result of our overconsumption of fish. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But yep. at the same point, we really want to see everybody just having the, the most opportunities that they possibly can have. Yeah. Right. And um, I'm going to push, and uh, the BAA pushes for your opportunities in, in bow fishing. Right. Um, so your, your membership dollars, um, if you decide to contribute and become a paid member of the BAA, are going to go towards fighting those battles, um, hiring lawyers in some situations. Mm -hmm. We hired a lawyer to help us fight a battle in Texas for right. unnecessary alligator gar restrictions. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. There's... There's a lot that we can do with that money, um, promoting the sport, uh, making sure that people are aware of what bow fishing is and uh, trying to have a presence at tournaments, trying to have a presence at, um, you know, sporting events, uh, yeah. outdoor shows, whatnot, that, um, you know, help people understand the sport better. And then there won't be as many concerns or questions um, for, from just the general public about what we're trying to accomplish. Right. And, and that's one thing that I noticed, you know, when we go through our records every week, there's like this week, there was a weak fish. I never heard of a weak fish. I yeah. had no idea what a weak fish was, <laughs> yeah. you know, and that's gotta be a lot of work on your part too, to find out about those fish, because I don't know if you've ever heard of a weak fish, but I've never heard of a weak fish before. <laughs> I, I'll admit there are a lot of Google searches that go along with that. Um, I, <laughs> I do a lot of, I do a lot of research and, you know, yeah. there may be people that say, oh, you know, they don't spend a whole lot of time trying to figure out what these fish are, uh, how to certify these records. I'll be honest with you. I can spend uh, 20 minutes con doing a record. I could spend two hours. Right. Um, I could wow. talk to three or four people about, you know, does it make any sense that this fish came from this state, you know, for example. Um, so there is a lot of research that goes into making sure that these records are as accurate as possible. And I'll be honest with you, that's one of the reasons why I want to have responsibility for it yeah. because I feel like everybody deserves to have these records be as accurate as possible. That's cool. And that's cool. If, if I feel like I have the capability of making sure that that happens. And that's awesome. And that's, that's what I, you know, trying to get out there to, to people is, you know, you're doing this all on your own free time. You've got your other job. Um, you also guide, um, and, and you're doing all this stuff on your own and, and I don't know if you're going to still kind of keep your hands in with the records once you become, you know, once you're the president, if there's going to be somebody else that does that, but that's a lot of work right there. Um, because I noticed when, once you took back over, all of a sudden there are those, those photos were of the people with their records and mm -hmm. the certificates. And I noticed that was because of you, Pete, you know, those were back up there and that's really cool. And people should be, should be glad that you're doing that for them. Yeah. I, I appreciate the recognition guys. Um, it, like it's a it's a love hate relationship. I mean, it's yeah. a very yeah. difficult position to have. Um, mm -hmm. And but I do I do like seeing the records out there. I like the fact that I I feel that they're very accurate. Yeah. Um, and that you know people can trust that when they go to the BAA's website, that the the fish that they're looking at is the right species. Um, you know they can mm -hmm. trust that it's the right weight. <laughs> you know right, right. that you know. There's no, there's no lift sinkers inside the fish. I mean, Isn't, I, yeah. I can't that's guarantee crazy. that, but that right. was crazy. Yep. That was nuts recently. It was. Um, and, and that's why we, you, you know, at our tournaments, Pete, because you've shot in a lot of our tournaments, we, at the end, we gut our big fish and we'll randomly take out fish out of, that people are weighing and we'll gut them out, you know? And people kind of look at us like, some people look at us like we're weird. Yeah. But actually a lot of the people, when they see us doing that, they're like. They appreciate it. They appreciate it. That's yeah. cool, you know? Yeah. I think it's, it's, yeah. it's important. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Especially I mean, when you're dealing I, with a lot of money, you yeah. know? Yeah. 
right? I mean, these guys, I mean, they're facing felony convictions, right? It's yeah. essentially stealing. It's, right. It really is in a way. Um, and we do go to some tournaments that the money, the prize money is pretty significant. Yeah, and if absolutely. you were to be caught cheating, not only would you lose the privilege of competing, mm-hmm. right? And mm-hmm. I, you know, as far as the BAA is concerned, I guarantee that if anybody was caught cheating in one of our tournaments, they would not be allowed back, right. period. Right. Um, and you're probably going to be, you know, you're probably gonna, not going to be welcomed in even your home state if you go to tournaments. Yeah, your name's in the mud. Right. Yep. That's it. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And I want people to know that that really should be the case. I mean, right. it won't be tolerated mm-hmm. under any under any circumstance. Absolutely. Yep. I think I think too. I'm not sure if you guys have been have been online at all, have seen it at all, but you, you guys have seen the walleye situation with that tournament here in the yeah. last week or two. Yeah. That was crazy. Yeah, that's what Pete was talking about just a little bit ago. Oh, the okay, gotcha. Yeah, yeah, the weights in there. That was mm-hmm. that's just wild, and the, the the outlash of people, you know, on that on that side of things. Um, so yeah, but Pete, you're you're gonna be the new president here. You've done a lot in your bow fishing career here. But let's take a step back here. What initially got you into the sport of bull fishing to lead you where you are today? I happened into bow fishing just by doing some searches for fishing spots on online forums. Wow. Well, like I said, <laughs> I know, you know, most people get introduced by a buddy, Yeah. Right. you know, or maybe their dad did it. Oh, I did this back in the 70s. You want to go try something out? He goes, yeah, you know, something like that. Well, growing up in the Northeast, I didn't have any exposure to it. But when I moved to the Midwest, I was on an online forum just looking for great opportunities to go either walleye fishing or musking fish, musky fishing out of my little boat that I had. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was going through the forums, and I came across one that said bow fishing. And I clicked on it. And I'll be honest with you, I don't think I clicked on anything else for like the next 30 minutes. I was, <laughs> I was beside myself. I'm like, look at these fish. I'm like. I didn't even know that you could potentially do this. Never mind that they get this big, right. you know, I'm yeah. seeing common carp that are 25, 30 pounds. And I'm thinking to myself, how am I going to do this? How am I going to figure out? How to do this? <laughs> so I spent the next few weeks researching, you know, and I bought a really cheap generator and I bought some cheap halogen lights. And the closest lake to me was random Lake over in Eastern Wisconsin. Wow. And I, the, they had a season on, on carp. And I, it's one of the few lakes in the area that has a season. The Winnebago area has a season as well. But Mar- May 15th was the first day that I could actually go out and actually yep. try yep. this. Wow. So I bought, I bought an AMS reel. I had an old York hunting bow that I put this reel <laughs> on. I mean, literally just scraping because I had no idea if I was going to enjoy this or not. Sure. Um, I launched my boat. I wasn't on the water maybe 25, 30 minutes, and these, you know, 16 to 18 pound carp are swimming by my life. And I'm, I was <laughs> freaking out, and I had my whole family with me. And the first few shots, obviously, I missed. Um, but I think on like the fourth or fifth shot, I connected. And it just, it just stuck with me. I mean, literally for weeks after that, I was on the water. Um, I would go to sleep at night. I closed my eyes. All I could see is fish swimming through my mind. Uh-oh. When I'm, when I'm dreaming. And then, you know, after that, it, it, it got really serious. Like, sure. okay, now what's, what's, what else is out there? Yeah. I find at other lakes, other species of fish, this, that, and the other. And then I found the WBA nice. and the tournament scene. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't too long. I think it was two years before I bought my 2072. Oh, wow. um, yep. So yeah. that bug really bit you good. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> How old were yeah. you, Pete, when you went out with the family that first night? Oh my gosh. Oh, you're going to, you're going to get me to my age now. <laughs> I'm um, sorry. I was in my early 30s. Okay. 31, okay. 32. Yeah. Right. That's cool. Yeah. So you bow fish for like that year or two years. Then you got involved with the WBA shooting in the tournaments. And then shortly. Yeah. You- my. Then after like two years, did you become like the secretary or get involved with the club itself then? So I believe my very first shot was on Petenwell Lake. Yep. So I, I dragged that 14-foot cedar strip boat all the way over to Petenwell. Mm-hmm. I did fair, I guess. Yep. I was shooting by myself. Oh, wow. Uh, hmm. I didn't finish last. <laughs> I didn't finish last. I had, I didn't, I mean, I wasn't in the scene. I didn't have yeah. people yeah. that I knew that were, 
you know, wanted to shoot competitively, never mind spend all night on the water. Right. You know what I mean? I mean, yeah. <laughs> what time are we going to get back? Oh, we're going to get back at like noon tomorrow. <laughs> you know, <laughs> we're going to be awake all night. <laughs> right. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's hard to, hard to talk your friends into that that have never done this before. But anyway, I think I spent like the whole night in, in two reed beds, literally within sight of the, of the boat launch, but luckily the carp spawn was going on. So there were fish at my feet. And nice. I think I ended up shooting 14 fish in that first tournament. And I, nice. like I said, I didn't finish last. Right. Um, so I was, I was pretty stoked about that. That's and awesome. then I think the next year I went to the BA or the WBA um, spring meeting. Sure. Yep. Where you guys set rules and set, set your tournament schedule. Mm-hmm. And I just sat there and I raised my hand and I said, what can I do to help? Oh, wow. And I said, I'm, I'm pretty good at taking notes, so why don't you use me as the secretary? <laughs> um, you know, Paul Stapleman was the, the treasurer at the time, and I have no problem doing that. I mean, my day-to-day job is all about logistics and project management and yeah. stuff like that. So I'm like, I've got a skill set that I think you guys can utilize. Cool. And, That's uh, awesome. It, it, well, I think it really worked out. Absolutely. You know, I, think that, I think the club benefited from it and I know I benefited from it. Absolutely. That's, that's so cool to just, you know, volunteer yourself and your time for, for these clubs. It's, it's really important for, for, you know, other States for where people are more vocal and want to help out with those clubs because it's something that's can be used well. And it's something that is needed as well, mm-hmm. you know, in these clubs. I know here in Wisconsin, we're very lucky. We've got a great, you know, bow fishing club here and um i'm glad to be part of it and i'm glad that you were you know a part of it and you were there you know you you're the one that made it really healthy as well uh your time up here in wisconsin yep so i gotta ask you this pete i know you've shot here in the wisconsin bow fishing tournaments i know you've shot in a lot of other state tournaments and i heard this going and traveling to other different uh tournaments out of state and they're like man, you guys up in Wisconsin are way too serious, man. You guys are way too competitive. Mm-hmm. You know, I was just curious if you have felt that from other, you know, in your bow fishing journeys from other tournaments. So, you know, what's interesting is that I think there are really two types of tournament shooters. There's the ones that are there for the competition. And then there are the ones that are there for the camaraderie. Yeah. And I think that, in Wisconsin, everybody is there for the camaraderie, but at the same time, everybody feels like they have an opportunity to win. Mm, and that's perfect. In other states, I feel like there's top teams, and everybody just thinks, "Oh, I'm just going to go donate my money." Yeah. But at the same time, I want to be there. I want to make sure that you know lightning doesn't strike or something like that. Um, I, mm-hmm. I know me mm-hmm. personally, it's hard for me to travel around the country and, and be competitive in all of these states because I don't, I don't live there. It, these right. aren't my, my home waters. Right. Yep. Um, mm-hmm. But after being in Wisconsin and all the guys that I shot against in Wisconsin, in two or three years, you can kind of have things fairly well figured out. And you can be competitive right. in the state of Wisconsin. Mm-hmm. Down south, the waters are so much bigger. Um, they're so much more spread out. You really have to know what the fish are potentially doing, and then you have to actually scout, and you have to put on the miles. And there are only certain teams that are really cut out for that. You know, they got mm-hmm. that drive, that desire mm-hmm. um, to really figure the fish out. Right. Um, so it, it's interesting. I mean, I love going to the big tournaments. I love going to the small tournaments. <laughs> I, I love being competitive. But I know most of the time that I'm there just to donate my money. I just like seeing the people, and yeah. I love seeing the results. Yeah, yeah. And that's a great perspective. I love what you said there, how kind of in Wisconsin, you can kind of figure things out because of our bodies of water, you know, and we have them on the same bodies of water year after year. And I, I love how you say that when you go out of state, you get on some of these bigger bodies of water, you get on some of these huge river systems, these huge lakes, you're shooting different species and it's, it's a different game. And I love that perspective between like Wisconsin and different States. That's awesome. I like that. Mm-hmm. So Pete, everyone loves giant fish, especially when it comes to tournament nights. And you had one of those special nights earlier this year and shot some truly big buffs. You had an incredible average weight. You just want to tell us a little bit about that night. 
That was crazy. <laughs> that was just absolutely crazy when I read those numbers. <laughs> I want to tell you guys all about it. <laughs> but I'm only going to tell you a little bit about it. <laughs> <laughs> Don't blame you one bit there. <laughs> so I'll be honest with you. East Texas, um, Texas in general, is an amazing place to bullfish. Yeah, it is. Um, yeah. I, I just got back from Louisiana this year as well. I was down there for the World Championships. Louisiana, another great place to bowfish. There are certain times of the year in any state that you go to where the fish are just there. And most of the time it's the spawn. Right. Mm-hmm. In 2019, my team and I went to the to the US Open World uh the US Open Bow Fishing Championship and yeah. it was hosted out of Louisiana, but you could go to some of the, some of the lakes up in Texas. Um, and we, we scouted and we found a spot and there was some fish there and we thought to ourselves, this is great. You know, we're going to come here. We have no idea if this is going to work out or not, but we're going to give it a shot. Nobody else was on the water with us that night. I mean, it's just, I, you just didn't know. Mm-hmm. So we actually did really well in that in that open. We ended up taking big fish of the tournament, right. big buffalo, yep. and we finished eighth overall. I think it was. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, a team came in with like six hundred pounds of grass carp, and they were they were hard to touch. But we did we did fairly well. Yep. Well, you won some good. Of you course, won like wasn't it close to like four grand with that big buff tour or something like that, or thirty five hundred? We won over eleven thousand dollars in, wow. in cash and prizes. Wow. Yeah, in that tournament. Wow. Yeah, nice. it was it was a special it was a special day for us. We really mm-hmm. enjoyed that. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you know you just you just keep it in your mind. You're like you never know if the fish are going to be there again or or whatnot. Um, well, fast forward, we had an opportunity to go back to um, these lakes again. You know, for the Texas State shoot this year. So you had a little and bit of timing, background. You had a little bit of a background on the those timing. Lakes. Yep. Yeah, the timing was kind of working out for us. Like, sure. okay, things are kind of lining up here. So again, we went out, we did our scouting, and we found a few fish, and we thought, okay, we got a chance here. Um, if these fish stay, you know, obviously spawns don't last forever, right? Mm-hmm. But we found we found some fish that looked like they were getting ready to do something special, mm-hmm. and uh, <laughs> <laughs> we put forty-seven fish in the boat. Wow. We had five or six get off. One of them, a couple of them were due to some arrow malfunction. Um, our largest fish was just under 65 pounds. Oh my gosh. And uh, <laughs> that was on their scale. In my scale, in my boat, it was 67.7. Wow. <laughs> oh my gosh. Good Lord. <laughs> but we had four fish over 60 pounds. Oof. Oof. We, had a, we had a handful in the 50s. We had a handful in the 40s, and the smallest fish that we weighed was 37 pounds. Nice. And these are all oh. smallmouth buffalo. Um, and like I said, we lost four or five fish that were in the 40 to 50 pound range. Mm, wow. Um, I think the smallest fish in the boat was a 24 pound common. <laughs> Good lord. So even the even, even the, the common commons we were putting in the boat were big. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Oh my gosh. What a night. That's crazy. And we finished our big 20. We rolled into weigh-ins. There was a team there that had over 800 pounds of grass carp. 800 pounds oh of grass gosh. carp. And I guarantee they thought they had it locked. Oh, yeah. I guarantee yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. <laughs> and, and we rolled up to the scales, and, and we sunk the scale to 996.8. Oh. That's amazing. And here That's I am. Awesome. I'm I'm just so disappointed because we didn't break a thousand oh pounds. I'm like, we had gosh. the fish. The fish were there. <laughs> oh, but if you if you think about it, if you think about the opportunities that we had, the number of fish we had, the size of the fish we had, I I've never heard of a comparable night. I especially not on a tournament night. Exactly. I'm like this. This is probably one of the most epic things that ever ever happened to a boat mm-hmm. fishing. Um, and, and just and so yeah, you all I know mean, out there that that right there on your 20 fish that you weighed in is a 49.8 pound average. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's crazy. Good grief. Almost a 50 pound average on 20 fish. That's crazy. <laughs> 
and like you said, those it, are special nights. Special. Yeah. It was special. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. Wow. That's really and, cool. And I don't know. I don't know when they're going to have the tournament again next year. If they have it the same amount of at the same time frame, hopefully I can make it. Maybe we'll go and see if we can do it again. I don't know. I'll come shoot with um, you, Pete. Yeah. I'll come down and shoot with you. <laughs> <laughs> That's really awesome. That's a heck of a night right there. And like you said, especially when it mm-hmm. happens, you know, during the, what was that? The Texas state championship was that? That's right. It was wow. in the end, at the end of March. That's Texas really state cool. Championship. Mm, mm, mm. So I know that, you know, just by watching Facebook and social media, uh, your pictures, you really love bow fishing with your son. Uh, you've taken him to several different States. I think I ran into you and your son one year down uh, below one of the dams by Kentucky. One I was year. with you actually when we oh, ran into him. Yep. Okay. Yep. And um, he has several BAA youth records under his belt. I know that's got to put a pretty big smile on dad's face. The kid is, um, <laughs> he, he's, he's something to watch. Yeah, I'll tell you. That's um, awesome. He took to it like a duck to water. Um, he's been shooting fish since he was eight years old. He got his first fish when he was eight. Uh, it was practically a trick shot. He, he nailed like a three pound common, like shooting over his shoulder. It was, it was nuts. Um, and he never really let up. Uh, he, he's always been, uh, very quick on the draw. Um, very, very fast. Um, almost to, uh, almost to, uh, his detriment <laughs> in some cases. I'm like, you know, if you, if you aim, you'd probably get a few more. <laughs> He's but I'll tell you, shooter. he makes some incredible shots, and he has traveled all over the country with me. Uh, we have literally been from Washington State all the way to Maine. Wow. Uh, he has records in probably mm, eight or nine states. Oh, my gosh. Youth records, adult records. Um, he he has records. And cool. uh, he was the two-time Youth Bow Fishing Association of America uh, Youth Shooter of the Year. Shooter of the Year. Yeah. That's really cool. Really awesome. yeah. What a legend right there. Good Lord. Mm-hmm. And, and you know, yeah, cool. and he's, he's getting ready to become an adult now. So I don't know. I mean, he's, <laughs> he's 17 right now. So <laughs> well, I hope he still, go, gonna... I, ho- I hope he still gets on the water and goes on and shoots with you. Um, he does. Yeah. That's awesome. Because I, like I said, some of your pictures, like you said, he shot his first fish when he was eight and I see some of those pictures and then I see him shooting, you know, now on tournaments with you, I think he was shooting in that tournament where you shot that 49 pound average. And, um, that's really cool to see, you know, him sticking with it and, and you two, you know, building a great relationship just because of bow fishing. That's really cool. It is. It has been amazing. He actually shot the biggest fish in that tournament. He, uh, in fact, if, if Dustin and his team hadn't shot a freak alligator gar in the place that they were shooting almost a thousand, Dink are. Oh my gosh. <laughs> we would have we would have had big fish at the tournament as well and it would have been my son's my son's fish. Wow. Um, that's cool. That's it really was, cool. It's the youth it, it's the youth record for, for Texas for a smallmouth buffalo. And uh right now it is also the Texas state record for a oh, smallmouth wow. buffalo because awesome. of some some things that just transpired with the <laughs> the record that was out there. <laughs> oh yes, yes. Yep. Uh-huh. Yep. And that's sort of, that we were yeah. we were discussing that in our previous podcast, kind of what's going on here and stuff. And that's that's something that we'll definitely try to bring up when when we figure you know that part out. I'll just leave it at that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yep. Mm-hmm. So, Pete, do you have a favorite species? And then to go along with that, do you have a favorite state that you like to shoot in? You know, it's not just one. You know, going going around and and seeing as much as I've seen. Um, there are certain states that I love to be in at certain times of the year. Um, obviously, Texas at a certain time of the year for big buffalo. Mm-hmm. Um, I love to be in Missouri for the gar spawn. Um, the long nose gar be 20, 25 pounds. Mm-hmm. And I, I love seeing them swimming through the water, just like a giant green log, you know. Um, and I love the opportunities that they present. Yeah. But I yep. think my all time favorite fish is um, working my way into the back of a cove on Kentucky Lake and watching a 40 pound grass carp just <laughs> bolt for its life. Yeah. 
and everybody is just trying to stick an arrow in it. If you do, it just screams the drag. Man. <laughs> that, yep. That's what gets me going. It that's honestly cool. does. <laughs> that's awesome. Yep, that's awesome. That's really cool. That's cool, yeah. Now, <clears throat> I know we started the podcast out with you kind of updating everybody what's kind of going on, but um, I know you love being hands-on. You love helping others. You know, you love shooting in tournaments. You're involved with the BA Records. Um, you've been the secretary for the WBA. Um, you make instructional bow fishing videos on YouTube uh, called This Week in Bow Fishing. Is that correct? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. That's Thanks really for the awesome. shout out there. That's really cool. I'm on YouTube. I've got a website called twibowfishing.com. And uh, there's a lot more on there than just instructional videos. So right. you you kinda, know, I'd love it if people came and checked that out. Absolutely. You kind of talk like the, on bull, or um, like Red Horse and stuff like that. And um, you have guests on there as well. So that's really cool. So, yeah, people check that out as well. You know, um, this week in bow fishing it's called. Right. Mm-hmm. And, yep. and, and I was going to ask. I, whoop, go ahead. Yep, go ahead. I think we were getting the same spot. You were going to ask me about guiding maybe? Yes. Are you still guiding down there uh, in Missouri? So, like you said at the beginning of the podcast, I've been very busy. Um, guiding is not something that I am actively advertising. Okay. Um, but that doesn't mean that I'm unwilling to take people out if they're interested. Um, I still maintain my, my business. And I still maintain the name of my guide service, Obscure Adventures yep. uh, Guide Services. So if you're interested in heading out to Lake of the Ozarks, in uh, middle of Missouri and you want to get yourself on some big grass carp, some yeah. gar or some buff oil, you mm-hmm. know, look me up. Uh, mm-hmm. I've got a website, obscureadventures.com and I'd be happy to talk to you. That's really cool. So yeah, if you want to get out there and it's beautiful down there too. It's funny you, you say Lake of the Ozarks, Pete, because um, about five years ago, uh, we took a family trip down there. With, uh, we had some friends that have a cabin on Lake of the Ozarks and they're back off the main channel in the back cove. And, um, mm-hmm. of course I'm sitting there and I'm, I'm looking on their dock and I'm looking down at the end of that cove. I'm like, I bet you there's fish <laughs> down in there, you know? So they have, a, they had a son and his son had a little John boat. So we jumped in this John boat one night and I got a couple of flashlights yeah. and we scooted back there into that back cove and I couldn't believe it. I shined these lights and all of a sudden I could see a buff, you know, and I could see a grass carp. Then we came up a little further and there was a common went a little bit further back and there's another buff back there. I'm like, Oh my gosh, I got to bring my, my bow fishing gear down here next time I come down here. Cause I was like, I never saw a boat while we were there the whole time, you know? And I was just like, this is a really, really cool spot because I think they also have like big heads when you get up towards a dam, possibly a big heads up in that area too. There are some monster big heads in yeah. the lake itself. And then there are definitely big heads down below the dam. Right. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. Lots of species to go after there. Good yeah, Lord. Yeah. That's awesome. It's really cool. Well, yeah. I think that's going to wrap up our interview here, Pete. But um, once again, thank you so much for coming on and joining us here on the Bow Fishing Buzz. Uh, thanks for taking the time to join us. And um, congratulations, Pete Gregoire, the new BAA president. And um, I know you're going to do a great job. And um, you know if you need anything, AMS Bow Fishing is here to to do whatever we can to help you guys out. Thank you, Matt. Thank you, Derek. I know that AMS has always been a very strong partner in the bow fishing community. I know you've supported the BAA um, extensively over the years. Uh, I'm looking forward to keeping that and maintaining that relationship with you guys. Um, and I'm looking forward to seeing you guys on the water. Um, Absolutely. So everybody have a great <laughs> have a great time. Thanks. Absolutely. I appreciate the time with you. You bet. Thank you, Pete. Yeah, thank and you, um, Pete. best of luck down there on your new adventures. Congratulations, man. Yeah. Thank you. All, All right. right. I'll talk to you guys soon. Take thank care, you. Pete. Bye. Just a great A human being right there. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. Yep. Good guy. He loves to just be involved, mm-hmm. you know? And that's what we need more of. We need more people to step up and just be involved. Yeah. Yeah. You know, don't just go and show up at tournaments and weigh your fishing and leave, right. you know, give right. a helping hand. Well, and what's interesting to me, Matt, is he said that on any given record, it could take 20 minutes of research to make sure everything's good to go, or it could take up yep. to two hours. How many records do we read off every two weeks? Like a dozen? 
Um, yeah, every two weeks. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, that's right. that's a lot of time in just that mm-hmm. aspect of what he's doing is to make sure that all those records are are you know ready to rock and roll. That's that hats off. That's right. that's awesome. That he 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 obviously cares and is passionate about what he's doing. Yeah, and and like that weak fish, you know, for so, so somebody submits that they shot a weak fish. You know, I'm sure it's a, a you know a brackish water or saltwater fish, mm-hmm. and he's got to search to make sure that. Okay, is this even legal to shoot? Right. Because like I said, I've never heard of a weak fish. Right. You know, being here in good old central Wisconsin. Yeah. We don't got too many weak fish around. Yeah. <laughs> right, right. Like like and if if you're listening and you haven't heard of it, like the spelling is W E A K fish. Like a weak fish. Yeah. Like not a strong one. Not a strong <laughs> like one. Like a weak one. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, yeah, that's a lot of research that goes into making sure everything's uh, yeah. ready to rock and roll over there. Right. So. so once again, congrats to Pete Gregoire, the new BAA president. And um He'll do a great job. Yeah. He'll absolutely. do a great job. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. So, Matt, here to finish out the podcast, I, do right. have a, I have a quote for you. Ah, uh, here we go with the quote of the day. And it is a little bit, I do not have, this quote was not stated. Someone at some point had to come up with it, but there, there's no guessing to who said it this time. It will simply be a... Uh, do you, you even need, know who said it? No. No. Oh, it's nope. just a quote. It was just a quote that I found. I'm like, yeah. I tried to find who said it, but I couldn't find it. Okay. It's not necessarily a... a a big inspirational quote, but it's just something that I've heard before, and it's kind of interesting. So all you got to do is tie it into your bow fishing career, tie it into bow fishing somehow, because I have a way that I think it could go okay. in the bow fishing world. All right. Um, so we'll see if you think the same way. All right. And it kind of it goes into, you know, you were just gone with Wendy and Alyssa down shooting some gators. So this is the quote, all right? Yep. Never insult an alligator <laughs> until after you've crossed the river. Okay, I'll say it again. Never insult an alligator until oh, yeah. after you have crossed the river. How can you tie that into the bullfishing world? Ooh, a tough one for Mr. Schilling. Oh, <laughs> you want to hear? You want to hear my take on it and what I, I think I, it? I, could you better be? not tick anybody off. Oh, I hope not. I don't think so. <laughs> no, I said that's what that quote. You know, you better not tick anybody off oh. at the boat landing or at weigh-ins or right, right. Or don't fall in the water on top of a gator, too. That would also be a very good thing not to do. Yes, yes. When I read that, Matt, I thought of it as like, uh, oh, you're kind of, you're taunting a little bit. You're Puffing getting that chest yep, up a little bit. Yep, and I, what I thought of it was every year at the Big 20, we do boat inspections, all right? And I'm out there, I'm all, every year I'm one of the people out doing boat yep. inspections. Yep. So as we're crossing off the checklist for everything that you have to have, I'll just make small talk. Oh, you guys been out scouting at all? You seeing many fish? You know, and I fully expect lies from these people. They're not going to tell me anything. Right. But every tournament, you'll get three or four teams that will come tell you. They'll say, I ain't going to lie to you. We're in the money. We're top five. We're going to go shoot the heck out of these fish tonight. We're going to finish really good. And it's like, oh, Okay. All right, they're insulting that alligator a little bit, and they got to go cross the <laughs> river. The river yet. No, they didn't even get there yet. <laughs> and nine times out of ten, Matt, those teams they don't come back to weigh. They in. They either don't come back to weigh in, or they don't finish where they're expecting. Mm-hmm. And I think that that tournament night can be such a humbling experience. You know, you hear it all the time. We were on fish the night before, on fish oh, yeah. last week, and it turns out to not be anything like yep. what you were expecting. Yep, mm-hmm. that's kind of what I thought of it when I saw that. Absolutely, Th- that reminds me of. <clears throat> Quite a few years back, we were shooting in the BPS US Open, and uh, we were scouting the night before, Dennis and I, Dennis Redden and I, and we were scouting, and um, the big heads were literally not scared of the lights that night. Mm-hmm. Literally, they were bumping their noses out the front of the boat. They yeah. just did not care that we were shining them, and they were just lit up in this one section of the river like crazy. Wow. And, you know, they're 30 to 40 pounders. Okay, yeah. Good fish. Yeah. Not a care in the world. They're just mouth on top of the surface, lips halfway out of the top of the surface. And this is like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, it was about a four and a half hour drive from that boat oh. landing to the tournament location. Okay, yeah. Um, so we got down to that tournament that day, and people are, you know, are coming up to you, and they're like, hey, man, you know, how's it going? Yep. I didn't say a word mm-hmm. about what we saw. Because I know that what can happen. Yeah. And it happened so bad, Derek. <laughs> it was pathetic. Really? We never saw a big head oh the whole night. Oh, my gosh. 
Really? Saw a couple silvers. Oh, yeah. man. Never saw a big head the whole night. Oh. The night before, they were literally bumping their heads off the front of the boat. That's crazy. Yeah. That's wild. You never know. And that's why know. I don't like to say, even if I'm on fish, I know it, it can happen too much. Yeah. Those right. fish can disappear in a heartbeat. Mm-hmm. I think I think those fish, uh, and you know, even with these guys who say that they're on fish, somehow they can hear you say that at the tournament. They're like, oh, all right. Yep. We're out of here, boys. Out. Yep. Have fun. Not seeing nothing. Pull a plug and away they go. Yep. Yep. <laughs> yep. So, yeah, that's, that's a quote of the day today. Yep. I like that one. Ah, there it is, Schmitty. Mm-hmm. Almost a perfect hour. Yeah. Wow, that went by fast. Yeah. Well, we hope you enjoyed this week's Bow Fishing Buzz podcast, joined by Pete Gregoire. Appreciate him coming on and joining us. Yeah. Yep. Remember, it's still early October. Lots of good bow fishing left. I'm going to try to hit the rivers this weekend. Get out and do some fall bow fishing. Beautiful colors right now. Oh, yeah. Great time to be out there. So get on the water. Enjoy the sport of bow fishing. From all of us at AMS Bow Fishing, we wish you the best of luck. Remember, aim low, think big. Thanks for listening, guys. <laughs>